what's in a harness? How do I like the harnesses? Do they work? <laughs> do you want to see my mess of harnesses? <laughs> Stick around. Hi guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parapolis Bond. I have 22 species of parrots. I love my parrots. Welcome to my channel. If you want to learn about creating a blissful bond with your parrot, check out my parrots and maybe learn a little something because with 22 species, I do know one or two things. Then you're in the right place. Come here, Mace. If on the other hand, you are already subscribed, you already set your preferences on YouTube, then you may or may not know this is Macy, my female cape. And over here is Land Shark, whose name came as Dakota. But this hawk head gets down on the ground, puts her beak down, and steamrolls forward. So we call her Land Shark. So <clears throat> let's get right, sorry, Macy, into the harness mess. Now, um, all harnesses are not created with equal. Um, there, I one thing that's really interesting is I kind of feel like the there's hopefully a right harness for the right parrot and that's going to depend of course some on size but it also depends some on the parrot themselves parrots are not all like they all have wings they all have a chest they all have a keel bone but they really have different girths and all land shark you can see um she's a, a pretty girthy girl but there are some birds like my Indian ringneck who are real sleek and kind of like banana thin, not literally, but enough that it kind of makes a difference. So this harness for a parrot like that, I like better. My Pionis parrot, I'm going to show you this harness, this little blue one. I'm not going to give you name brands um, unless one of them has a name brand on it because they are all on Amazon and basically um i did get one that was a a real name brand but actually i don't know where it is right now um but they're all on amazon and they're just made in china good bad right or wrong i don't know how you feel about that i don't know how i feel about that but um you know the harnesses when you go through them what are you gonna do so the basic idea to this harness is the head goes right in here. Um, my fingers would be the wings. <laughs> my palm, did you hear that? She laughed. My palm would be the bird's body. And then you adjust right here to tighten it. And it's not easy to tighten. Um, and then you've got the tether. This one, I think, would work really well for a green cheek. My Pionis won't stop biting me when he's in it. And <clears throat> he's not a very bitey bird, but I had a vampire experience with him. He just... And so that was, like, not the right harness. And I think one of the reasons is you get to adjust the body of this harness like it's upside down because I can't hold it any other way you get to adjust this part but you don't get to adjust over the shoulders like so here's the head and these two straps would go over the shoulders and you don't get to adjust that so I think it was too tight on him and so one thing that's really hard is you know a good harness would fit both over their shoulders and around their body if that's where the harness is and so honestly it, it was bad enough that I was like you know what I, I might prefer to keep him clipped because when I got him he was clipped and his feathers haven't fully grown out yet and I just sort of sat there going I think I I think he and I would be happier than dealing with that harness it was just so torturous for both of us now this one worked better with my Pionis and I feel like this would you know it's adjustable here so that you can adjust that eight and we'll do it as an infinity um 
it's adjustable and maybe it would work just fine for my green cheeks but the one i just showed you i think would work better for my green cheeks and i have a smaller version somewhere of this one for my parrot lips now this figure eight is interesting i'm not even going to try to put it on land shark um <clears throat> because the parrot's um wings would go in it like that so here's the head and this would secure the wings and you adjust it here or exactly the other way which i think would be better over the wings since their wings are you know kind of like a palm right over the wing where it's shorter is where you would adjust it and then this is their head and my palm is their body that um would work better i took i lay my pounds out like this and guess what <laughs> it came right off fortunately i am working on harness training him while he's clipped so that he gets used to it and i get used to it and i get used to putting it on that kind of thing am i crazy about this harness no i'm not does it work yeah and for my pounds it works better than the other one now this red one is kind of i think tangled and an exact repeat of the blue one um let's see and i'm i'm pretty like just get a couple try and see what works <clears throat> so i wind up sometimes with the same thing actually you can see that the red one the shoulders are shorter so this would fit a green cheek better and that is part of the problem you kind of have to keep getting them until you get the right one so again that goes over the body there's there we go the head the wings and the body and so you want it to go you know at the right distance and it's adjustable on the waist or around the body this one's adjustable over the shoulders is not but you want it to adjust so that it fits them well because one thing you have to really watch with the harnesses for your parrot is if you constrict their chest you can constrict their breathing parrots are not like you and i they don't have two lungs they have air sacs and um, I haven't counted how many air sacs, but I think they have like some in their head, in their body. I mean, they have like, I don't know, six, eight, maybe it's eight. So their whole respiratory system is very different than ours. That's one of the reasons theirs is so delicate. Uh, and so, you know, I, I do feel like there's this scale you have to balance with a harness so that your parrot isn't being tortured and um, and isn't constricted, like emotional torture from the experience and constricted physically from the harness and maybe some balance in there for you, but also that, you know, that they're safe. So please keep that in mind. I've never had a problem with that, but the minute my parrots look unhappy, I get angry at the harness. Um, I, I've had one or two like this where I, I just, I couldn't get it off them or I was having a hard time getting it off them. So I grabbed my scissors and I safely cut the harness. And I'm like, I'll trash the harness. We're not hurting the bird. I'm, you know, I'm really like that. So I'm super cautious. I've never heard of someone suffocating their parrot. Maybe you can't suffocate them with a harness. I don't want to find out. I'm sure you don't either. Especially parrots are, you know, they're incredible. They're spectacular and they're expensive so um i would think that you would not want to hurt your parrot in any way shape or form so this harness says avian web <coughs> and like i said um it's the only one with a brand so hi sweetie you want to come be in the video more people like seeing you if i could get her to show her what do they call it i forgot i think it starts with an n I call it a lion's mane or daisy head, because she'll get a, a mane. Um, land shark here, if you're not familiar <coughs> with me and my channel, 
We adopted her and our Major Mitchell in November. The owner was dying, so they were rescues. So she came plucked. That hasn't stopped. She's trying to mate with me as I make my video. Um, and her feathers haven't grown out because she was clipped. Um, and, you know, we're just not convinced that she can fly. I take her for a walk almost every day. She loves it. She looks at, you know, they do the sideways looking at the sky. She watches things. I will pick up a twig that I know is safe. And she goes at it like a dog with a bone. Now, um, enough of that sidetrack. I, hopefully that was fun for you. But anyway, this harness, also um, the top does not adjust. The, the side does again. And this one's really easy to see because it holds itself up. The head goes in the middle. Again, the um, wings go in the sides and I can't make my hand like a parrot. And the, the, um, my palm, my hand would be the body. This is the harness that Bonnie Rose, my golden conure, wore when we went to Naples, when I traveled with her. I would not feel comfortable with Bonnie in a different harness. I liked this harness for her. Did she love it? No. At first she was kind of biting at it, but we were in the car, we were traveling, she knew there were different things going on and she was a little more uh, on guard about everything going on. So she really, she didn't love the harness, but she didn't really fret about it. And throughout the trip, one night, two days, um, the harness probably went on her and off her two or three times a day. And by day number two, she didn't care. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, put it on me. I haven't put it on her since. <clears throat> and so uh, the next time I go to put it on her, we'll see how she does with it. But uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe it's because it's leather. Maybe it's just made better. It just worked really well. I was very happy with it. Uh, Bonnie is a special, special parrot because um, <clears throat> golden conures are rare, actually like hawkheads, and uh, they're expensive. I do not plan on getting another one. And I, it's like Bonnie has to be treated with kid gloves because nothing can happen to her. Therefore, I, with her, you know, like kind of, I, I almost wouldn't care how much the harness costs. And this one was probably double or triple the price of the other harnesses. Um, <laughs> But for, and I'm not saying that I don't care about my other birds, guys. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm just saying that, uh, I don't know. Well, golden conures, uh, they're more susceptible to getting sick and stuff. So they're just more delicate. And so I just, I, I'm treating her like she's more delicate. Now, um, so I do like this one. It, the ad adjustable strap is actually a buckle, which is kind of nice. Although I guess it's really the same as the others because I don't see a little pin. But anyway, uh, the one thing I didn't like about this harness is it doesn't have a place to clip on onto it and it did not come with a tether or whatever you want. So I just clipped it on on the back like that, which worked fine. Didn't love it. Uh, I'm, I'm a little surprised they didn't, you know, give you something to, but you know, anyway, the harm, the, for you to hold on to. That was a little weird, but so there you go. Um, I have put a parallel, a green cheek, my pionis, my golden, my, um, I can't remember if I've done my Indian ring neck or not. I've done my Amazon, I tried my macaw, ha, 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 um, my crimson. You know, I've, I have harnessed several of my parrots. I've never tried one of my capes. My cape parrots are also really special to me. Um, I, they, they're really chill, so they would probably be really great on the walk kind of thing or traveling, but they're a little bigger and I don't know, I just, you know, I'm like, eh. Um, I like, it's easier for me. I like taking the small parrots better. Um, someone on my channel, I don't like mentioning names in case you guys don't want your name mentioned. Um, someone on my channel has an Amazon and he said that 
you know, he takes his Amazon places. I'm like, that's so awesome. Um, I, I do take my Amazon places sometimes. I have definitely taken them out to coffee shops, out to restaurants where we could sit outside, uh, to my mom's house for dinner. But, um, and I have put him on a harness. But the thing about a harness is that the more you make it a pretty regular part of your routine with your parrot, the easier it gets. My Pionis was like, I don't care how often you do it. I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to get used to it. Uh, and then we used the green one and that was better. So, uh, you know, like maybe he's okay with it. But therefore, uh, I think you have to be willing to get a couple different styles of harnesses until you find the right one. If I had a golden harness for you and I was like, this is the one that works for everyone, I would tell you. Um, but I don't. This style, I have, I've, I have somewhere, one that's even smaller for my partlets. It has worked great for my partlets. Sometimes when I'm trying to get it on or off them, some feathers come out on the green cheeks and the parrotlets, and I don't like that. I have not had that problem with this guy. I have not had that problem with this guy. Um, and I'm sure you've had the experience where your bird is unhappy. You really need to let them just be around the harness, bite the harness, play with the harness. What is this? Look, is this fun? Look, this does nothing to you. You can bite it, that's right. I don't care if they bite it, they're not that expensive. Like, kill it for all I care. Get comfortable with it, don't be scared of it. And then when I go to put it on you, um, which won't be fun, you know, it won't be so bad. So as you do that, the first time you put the harness on the parrot, you may have to have someone help you. Um, you'll probably get bitten. You'll probably have a vampire experience. And then uh, the second time, it'll probably be the same, maybe a little worse. The third time, not quite so bad. The fourth time, eh, especially if you're doing it every day. The fourth, fifth time, your parrot starts to go, oh, whatever. <laughs> I know, I'll just let, let this person put it on me and then, you know. And then I get to go out. You really want to also associate it with something positive and then you are more likely to um, build a habit where they know what the harness is, they know that it means that they're going out, they're doing something fun with you. And, <clears throat> and then uh, the fifth time is probably the magical time. So for me, that's the fifth day. Uh, that fifth day, all of a sudden, my hands are healing. <laughs> She's laughing with me. My hands are healing, I'm not getting more bites it gets better. So uh, I hope that gives you some really good ideas with the harness. Try to make it a regular thing. Try to find the harness that works best for you and your parrot because really, Ale, my Pionis and I would rather clip him than do this one, but we might be able to live with this one. So, um, you know, find what works for you. And the more you can make it a regular part of your routine, the more successful you're going to be. Going out, traveling with your parrot, going on a walk with your parrot, taking your parrot to the coffee shop, to a restaurant, where else do we go? To pick up my daughter from school. To me, that's the life. It's kind of like walking a dog, you know, like who doesn't want to take their dog everywhere? It's fun. So. Here's to your blissful bond with your parrot. Now, if your parrot's stressed out, make sure you get Tink's must-have parrot relief on parrotbliss.com. That is CBD and hemp oil. The hemp oil has the right balance of omegas for you and your parrot, which is beneficial. And the CBD, of course, will help support their immune system. If they're stressed out, it'll help de-stress them. Just beneficial all around. I kind of rotate, um, just like I don't give seeds to my parrots, all year, I give it to them in the winter when they would, there would naturally be seeds. Then I don't give it to them uh, during the summer. So we're getting ready to change. They've been getting seeds now and we're getting ready to de-seedify. And I just put the seeds in with their fresh veggies. We're getting out of that season now. Um, I, I kind of do the same. My rotation isn't around the calendar year the way the seeds are, but for the CBD, you know, maybe I do one or two days a week. Maybe I do a couple of days and then a week off or, you know, a week on, a week off. It just sort of depends. I kind of go by the feel. I look at my parrots and I go, where are you at? 
what do you need? And that is doing my best. I try to read my parrots. I read their body language. Um, I try to train them not to get on my head. Are we gonna go for a walk? It's gonna rain. You wanna go for a walk? Yeah? Okay. Um, so the more you observe your parrot, the better. One of my vets says, no one knows their parrot like the owners. She goes, when you come in, I'm gonna ask you how your parrot's doing. I'm gonna ask you, you know, all sorts of things. She's like, cause you're observing them every day. I think that's very true. So I do, I observe my parrots and I'm like, is it time to give you CBD again, give you Chinks parrot relief? Is it time to back off a little? Because everything should be in moderation. I think everything should ebb and flow. Parrots naturally would eat like a hundred different things. Maybe not, you know, I forget in, in how often, but in other words, they don't have pellets just every day in the wild, day in and day out. So that variety of fresh vegetables, some variety with the oil, variety in the seeds, when seeds are seasonal, that kind of thing. Fantastic. Thank you for joining me in this blissful video. If you stuck with me all the way to the end, thank you, thank you, mwah. I will catch you in the next feathered video. And now, come here, Macy, come here. Come here, sweetie pie. Come here, good girl. And that is as loud as a Cape parrot gets. Now, technically she's a, either a gray, um, gray neck hood, I forget, or brown neck hood, Mwah. But one of the breeders that I got my Cape from said that at this point they're so blended. So I just call them Cape parrots. There's my beautiful Cape. So thanks and I'll see you next time.